Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us for uh, today's first webinar for Giving Day for Apes 2023. Um, we're very excited to be here with you all. Um, if you want, you can just let us know in the chat your name, your organization you're with, and we'll get started uh, very soon. Alrighty. So again, welcome everyone to our webinar event overview, uh, platform overview, and new features. Um, so we are going to get started. Um, so welcome. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to join us. Uh, so my name is Sarah. I am the project manager for Giving Day for Apes um, with Mighty Cause. We're the platform provider for the event. Uh, and I am joined today by Jackie, who is uh, with Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries. So I'll pass it over to you, Jackie. Thank you very much. Um, welcome everyone. We're really happy to have you here and start a new season of Giving Day for Apes. Uh, why don't we just move ahead to the next slide on our agenda um, and go to the event basics. All right. So Giving Day for Apes is now in its 10th year, which is exciting. We uh, started back in 2014 as a pilot project but from by Arcus Foundation for African sanctuaries, moved on to uh, North American sanctuaries, and then became a three continent event, which is what it is today. Um, this year, we are again supported by Arcus Foundation. We're very grateful for our sponsor's support. And we're excited that we have uh, some new sponsors in addition to returning sponsors that are allowing us to provide a lot of prizes this year. We will be updating that information on the Giving Day website, uh, as well as other information. So you should check back on that website frequently. Let's go on. So what does the 10 years mean? Um, since we started uh, Giving Day for Apes as Great Ape Giving Day, this event has raised and awarded more than $5 million. And we're looking forward to another successful year. And in addition to raising funds, we also want to raise awareness about what sanctuaries do, about apes, about the threats to apes. And one of our goals this year um, in our campaign as the host of the event is to raise awareness of the threats to apes in their habitat, the reasons why your sanctuaries and rescue centers are needed and are so important, and the ways that public, the public can make a difference for apes. And so as you're thinking about this year's campaign um, and what messages you might want to be sharing with your supporters, about those those big main themes. Um, we are again this year going to have a storytelling prize and we'll give details of it later this month. But part of the change for that prize this year is that we are going to be looking at how different pages and campaigns help to answer these questions and um, provide more information about these themes for educating the public. So let's go to the next slide. All right, the basics. A giving Day for Apes this year will be on Tuesday, October 3rd. It is a 24-hour event, still going from midnight to midnight Eastern time. Early giving is going to begin on September 11. And um, we did a survey last year to participants after the event who uh, the feedback from many was that the early giving period was a bit long because it was a month. So we have shortened it a bit this year. We still have a couple of weeks before giving day to start raising donations. And again, all online donations received from the beginning of early giving will count towards a participant's overall totals for giving day and their leaderboard totals. Um, registration is required to participate. And we're gonna be doing two other we webinars before early giving starts on August 17th and August 24th where we will go over some strategies for your campaign. We'll go over the full prize schedule and structure and more information. Uh, those links to register, I think, are already up on the Giving Day website, but we'll be sending reminders as well. Um, prize details are not right, quite ready. They will be coming soon, but I did wanna give you a preview of a couple of things. 
We are going to have a larger prize package this year. It will be at least $64,000 total. And if you have participated in Giving Day for Apes in the past, you will see that there are going to be some familiar prizes, such as leaderboard prizes, power hours, random golden tickets. We have more golden ticket prizes this year, and all of the golden tickets that will be awarded on Giving Day are worth $500 each. We're also going to have some kind of creative new prizes, and um, I have three of them listed here. One is our early bird registration prizes. We're going to give out two $250 prizes to participants who have registered and done a basic page upgrade by the end of the day on Monday, August 7th, uh, which is just a couple of days away. And when I say basic page upgrade, it doesn't mean you have to have your entire campaign ready, but it's just looking at your page if you're referencing the 2022 or 2021 Giving Day event to update that, to make sure that it is ready for this year's event. We are going to have some golden ticket prizes awarded for early giving activity. So there will be a couple of them worth $250 each and they will be drawn right before Giving Day for Apes starts. And it's gonna be based on all the donations that came in during early giving. So even if your organization is really not planning to fully engage in your campaign until closer to Giving Day, getting a couple of those online donations, even worth $5 each, will give you a chance to win one of these prizes. We are also, for the first time this year, going to have some most improved prizes, and we'll give you some more information about that later this month. But there's going to be one prize for each region, and it's going to be based on um, increase in your unique donors from last year's event, if you participated last year. So next one. All right. We want to just bring your attention to some resources we have. There is a participant toolkit this year, a uh, PDF document that I believe many of you have, but it is downloadable on the Giving Day website. And here we put some information just based on questions that we often receive. We created some FAQs about matching grants, peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, uh, some of the prizes, how those work. Also some steps on updating your page. So it's a great resource to share with your team if you have people helping you, uh, where this is their first year working with the Mighty Post platform, it could be helpful. We have translated it into Bahasa Indonesia as well. We have a lot of Indonesian participants every year. Um, that's close to being ready to put up. We're just doing a final review of it. Um, also, I wanted to bring your attention to the announcements. Now, if you are a page administrator and you log into your page, uh, go to your dashboard in the overview, this announcements bar that you see here will appear on the right-hand side of your screen. And that's gonna be updated as we have new announcements. You can see Sarah yesterday added um, a reminder about the early bird registration prize. This is also where an asset library link will be located and that's where you can get the Giving Day for Apes logo this year that you can add to your own graphics. Um, we're going to be adding some more information and files to this uh, such as graphics for so social media graphics. If your organization just doesn't have much time to prepare them, we're going to prepare some this year that, that you can use, that anyone can use. So that will all be in this uh, available through this announcements toolbar and we hope that you'll Check it frequently and see if there's something new there. We also want to make sure that we can reach you. So um, announcements and reminder emails will come from Mighty Cause at mightycause.com. So you know, check your spam if you're able to uh, fix your email settings so that doesn't come into spam. Make sure you get that in your inbox. We don't want you to miss any news. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Sarah, who's going to take you through um, page setup and some new features on the Mighty Cause platform this year. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Alrighty. So we'll start with talking kind of a high level overview um, of what your organization needs to do to prepare for this year's event. Um, so first things, register and make sure you're approved to participate by September 8th. Um, you'll then want to start working through your page, updating, refreshing that content. Um, make sure you're reviewing the nonprofit toolkit, the asset library, looking through all those wonderful support materials that have been provided to you. Um, and then using those materials to kind of plan your campaign, start broadcasting, 
um, you know, whether that's email communication or calling donors or calling supporters, talking to, you know, whoever is involved to help make your campaign a success. Um, and then you'll want to start thinking about how to elevate your campaign, whether that's through matching grants um, to entice donors or recruiting individuals to be peer to peer fundraisers for you. Um, and then just, of course, you know, using the time and the event to be creative, get engaged, spread your message, um, talk to people about your mission and just have fun because giving day for apes is a lot of fun. Um, so to get deeper into it. Well, to register your organization, that is going to be the first thing you do on the website. Um, so you'll go to givingdayforapes.org, you'll click registration, um, and we have a short form that will grant you access to your page uh, and register. So you'll be put into the queue, um, we'll review your registration and we'll approve you. Um, so you'll want to make sure you are registered and approved by September 8th. So that is a little over, well, that's actually quite some time. So you all have time, but definitely get started. Um, the more time you have, you know, to work on your campaign, the more success you're going to have uh, with the event. So definitely get uh, registered. Um, you can also review the terms of participation uh, directly on that page as well. Um, so once you're registered, uh, accessing your page is pretty simple. You'll want to go back to the website. You'll click login at the top right. Um, once you're logged in, it'll it'll prompt you to log in either through Google or Facebook or just the email address that you used um, to register your organization or if you're already an admin last year, you can use that email address. Um, but once you're logged in, you'll see a drop down menu under your name um, and it'll show you the organization that you're attached to so you can click that to access your profile page. Um, for those of you who might be new participants or a new admin or you had a change of staff and you're registering your organization, you can still go ahead and register your, uh, your organization um, and you don't need to do anything else to request admin access by, by filling out the registration form. We kind of have an all-in-one um, request for admin access, so you, by submitting, you'll be put into a queue for our support team, Mighty Causes support team, to review and approve your admin request. Um, you'll get an email once you're approved, uh, and then you'll be able to log in and access um, your account. Um, so you've registered, you're logged in, you're an admin, you're ready to customize your page. Um, I wanted to start by kind of showing what an example of a completed profile looks like and just kind of talk through a couple of the different ways why this looks really nice to a donor who's visiting your page and how it's going to influence a donor's decision to give. Um, so for this particular case, this is a Toucan Rescue Ranch, um, but they made great use of, you know, a clean logo. Um, they added a, you know, background banner image that kind of shows the work that they do. Um, they have also chosen the color, so you can customize the color of your page so it reflects your organization's kind of brand branding colors. Um, they've also utilized the metrics. We have a couple different styles of metrics that you can decide what you want to display on your page. Um, and then as you go down, you just see a very kind of uniform looking page. So they have a video, they have their mission, they've utilized, you know, an additional custom tab. So you come, we'll talk more about this, but you have an additional custom tab so you can add content, format it. Maybe you want to talk about, you know, specific programs that are near and dear to your organization and what you're doing. Um, so kind of thinking about how to break up your message um, so that a donor can understand what you do and why it's important to give to you. Um, so then as you scroll down, you can opt for a couple different sections to enable and we'll get into that as well. They had a specific campaign they wanted to highlight. Um, and then they also opted to show all the, you know, a couple of different peer to peer fundraisers that are going on for their event. Um, and then they also enabled a media gallery. So why does this influence a donor's decision to give? Um, I mean, your page is basically the face of your organization during the event. This is where donors are coming, they're searching, they're filtering, you know, by different apes that they're interested in supporting. <clears throat> so when they come to your page, they want to see, you know, a complete profile that shows that you're engaged. It shows that you're, you know, showing up for the event um, in its entirety. You know, you have taken the time to really kind of explain it, what it is that you're doing and that shows that you're just as invested as they are they you know they're trying to figure out who to give to and who they want to spend their money uh in gifts to so having a complete profile is definitely going to help a donor um decide to give to an organization 
So getting more into this, um, there's a lot of different tools and abilities for you to customize your page. You want to start by updating, you know, making sure your logo is clean, not pixelated, um, adding that kind of clean banner image you can choose from our gallery. I always recommend just, you know, even a picture of staff um, is a good one to choose. Uh, you can change the color, you can set your theme color, that's that button color that you're seeing. Um, but really just making sure, you know, every aspect of your page is filled out, um, especially your about section. So that's that section um, right here that kind of has your mission, what it is you're fundraising for, stuff like that. Um, so getting into your about, we have two custom, well, one isn't about, it's kind of, you know, permanent. And then we also have a custom tab available. So in this case, this one says staff. Um, in your case, you might have you know specific fundraising needs, like what it is, or maybe you want to tell a story about a specific ape uh, in your care. So you want to think about what your message is, your goals, um, really explaining to somebody who is visiting your page why they should support your organization. Um, our inline editor, it makes it really easy to edit. You can make things bold. You can add headlines. You can drop in photos, videos. Um, think about your formatting um, and just how you can clearly convey different blocks of information so that it's not, you know, five paragraphs that someone has to read to that it's overwhelming for a donor. So you want to definitely think about breaking up your message, breaking up your text, um, adding kind of unique photos, videos, stuff like that. Um, definitely utilize that custom tab that I've been talking about. This is where you can share your additional info, such as your project areas. Maybe you have fundraising goals. Maybe that's where you want to add updates throughout the event so that people who are supporting you can come and they can see in real time, you know, how your goals are going. You can also add testimonials. Um, really just thinking about how to make a strong appeal to a donor when they come to your page, why they want to give uh, and support your cause. Um, additionally, we have a new program section at the very bottom of your organization page in your organization data section. Um, this is where you can also, you know, add specific programming, more details related to that programming. Um, this is an example of uh, kids and kittens and vet grants, but it's very easy at the very bottom. You'll just click the little plus sign and you can start to add different programs, photos, uh, budget, what it takes to run that kind of program. Um, this is new and very useful because this is just another way to explain to donors and visitors of your page what it takes to, um, you know, do your day to day operations, what kind of programs you put on. Um, we also have two optional sections to uh, use, and that's the featured campaigns and the supporting campaigns. So these are your, you know, peer to peer fundraising kind of sections. So featured campaigns, you can customize specifically which campaigns you want to feature. Um, supporting campaigns uh, is going to automatically populate the newest peer to peer fundraisers that were created for your organization. So you can enable one, you can enable both. Um, if, it, this, if you're not doing any peer to peer fundraising, then you wouldn't have anything to enable. Um, but if you do, I recommend highlighting it um, because any fundraising that happens on your peer to peer pages directly goes to your organization page. And it's just a wonderful way to uplift those supporters who have taken the time and who are trying to actively fundraise during the event for you. Um, we also have an optional new giving activity feed, um, which is very exciting. So we got a lot of feedback from a lot of different events and, you know, um, organizations that they would love to see a giving activity feed donors. Um, a lot of donors want to have that added level of recognition for their gifts. Um, so you can scroll down kind of midway on your page right below your about section. Uh, and you can enable your giving activity feed. So you just click that button and it turns on and basically it shows a list of donors and gifts made. Um, and it is going to honor what the donor has requested as far as anonymity levels in their checkout process. So in this case, this is our example, but this is um, the names are showing, the amounts are showing. If they're anonymous, it's gonna say anonymous gave you know $50. If they choose to hide their um, gift amount, then it'll say just anonymous. Um, it won't show obviously any names or any gift amounts, um, which brings me to a slide that I want to talk about with anonymity levels for the giving day. Um, so there's kind of three options um, that a donor can select from during the checkout process as far as their level of anonymous um, that they want for the event. Uh, so when they go to the checkout form, 
um, underneath their donation amount in checkout, they have a box that says hide amount from public display. So basically this hides just the dollar amount that they have given during the event. Um, you as the organization are still going to have access to that information. It just won't be publicly displayed on you know, your giving uh, activity feed that we just talked about. Um, so you'll still have their, their donor information, their donor gift amount. Um, the other option is that the donor can opt to be uh, anonymous, and this means full anonymous. This means that you as the organization and the website, like no one is going to have access to that name, email, or full address. So you as the organization will be unable to thank them for their gift. Um, some donors prefer full anonymity when they come to make a donation, so we wanted to give them that option. This means that just that donor data is anonymous, but not their gift. So if they did want to be completely anonymous, donor information and gift amount, they would need to check two boxes. So they can check one, the other, or both. Um, in case you get any questions from donors or you're wondering why you can't see um, the donor name at the end of the event because you're going through looking for ways to thank donors, that would be the reason. If you can't see and it says anonymous, it's because the donor has, donor has opted for full anonymity. Um, all right, so moving into your checkout flow, this is another section you're going to want to customize. Um, Mighty Cause makes it really easy for you to uh, make an impactful donation um, kind of form. So we wanted to make it so that you all can suggest donation levels to really reinforce impact. So that is a fun way for you to kind of talk more about your organization just by showing donor gift amounts that you are looking for or that you suggest based on the needs of your organization. So this example shows four different donor levels, four different gift options, $40 for 10 pounds of dog food, $100 for transport rescue dogs. Um, I always recommend not just adding the dollar amount, but also adding the description. Um, that really just reiterates what it takes to do the things that your organization does, that your sanctuary needs to get um, you know, your mission and hit all those goals. Um, a lot of or, a lot of donors don't always know exactly how much they want to give. Some might have an idea, but some also come with an open mind. They might see, you know, oh, it takes a hundred dollars to transport, you know, apes. That sounds so cool. I am going to do that instead of, you know, my other gift option. So really, adding descriptors and these different levels. Um, just makes a more impactful giving experience for your donors. Um, you can also choose the donor data you collect during this form. So you can opt for donors to make a dedication or a designation. So you can enable these two options. Um, and new this year, we also have an optional volunteer pledge question. Um, not all organizations need or require volunteers. So this is a totally optional section to add. Um, but if you do want to enable it, it basically prompts the donor during the checkout process to label if they are interested in volunteering for your organization. Um, they can select yes, and that's just a way for you to collect, uh, you know, that information, add a reach out at the end of the event. Thank you for your donation. We see that you're interested in volunteering. Here's a couple options and things we're looking for for volunteers. Um, they can also, you know, roughly pledge how many hours they have to give just so you have an idea of what level of involvement they're looking for. Um, so this is just kind of a new fun added question so that you can learn more about your donors and they can, you know, also engage more with your organization. Um, once you're all done, you can preview the checkout flow. You can see exactly what it looks like for a donor to make sure, you know, you're collecting all the data and information you need. Um, one thing to note, we don't automatically collect uh, phone numbers, so if that's something that you do with your organization, your sanctuary likes to call your donors to thank them, you'll want to add that uh, question, add a section to collect that information. Um, post checkout, kind of same deal, we have an inline text editor, so you can add a thank you message um, and a customized donation receipt. Your thank you page is what's going to show as soon as that donor uh, clicks to complete their gift, this will pop up on the web page. It'll say thank you for donating, and then you'll have a message from your organization. So add a fun video, add a little picture, just add you know something that says thank you, because this is the first thank you message they're going to receive after making that gift. You can also add a call to action. So you can add a button, maybe sign up for our newsletter, um, anywhere you want to direct that donor, maybe for more information. 
uh, would be a good thing to add. Um, the donation receipt, you can add just a small custom message. This is what's going to appear within that giving day for apes automatic emailed tax deductible receipt that's going to be sent to the donor. So it's nice to add something, just a little, you know, additional note to recognize the donor as well. Um, I wanted to hit on a couple fundraising tools. We have just a, you know, a bunch of fundraising tools, and we're definitely going to get more into this when we talk about strategy, but so that it's on everyone's radar, especially if you're new, these are good sections to kind of start clicking through. Um, if you are a previous participant and maybe you haven't used these fundraising tools, go ahead and start exploring them. You know, you can draft matches and stuff like that. Just make sure you know how it all operates. But matching grants is going to be a key tool um, for fundraising success. It's going to entice donors to give during a specific time period. Um, if you do have questions about matching grants, we have, you know, some articles on them and then the toolkit, we have some materials. But in a nutshell, it's just a, you know, a gift that you get from someone that you can leverage uh, to bring in additional donations. So maybe it's $200, maybe it's you know $1,000, whatever it looks like, it's additional funds that you can entice other donors to give during a set period, um, almost like a buy one, get one. So you know, give $20, get $20 type of thing. Um, but very easy to set up. It's found under your fundraising tools under matching grants. Um, and you'll just click add new match. Uh, we have kind of a couple different ways to promote your match on your page. You'll see a cute little matching grant live tile when you have a live match um, right on the donate button. Um, it'll also be discoverable in the giving day for apes search. So if a donor comes on, you know, around noon and is like, I want to see, you know, do any organizations, any sanctuaries have active matches and looking to really get more bang for my buck, they can also filter uh, and see which organizations have live matches. Um, but yeah, so the match can be paid through the platform as an online gift, or you can have the match sponsor, of course, write you a check, uh, whatever you know you have agreed upon with the, the matcher, um, your grantor, you can figure that out with them, all the details, how they want to set it up. Uh, but we'll get more into matching grants in our next webinar. Um, some more kind of tools available to you, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, another great tool to help you have fundraising success. Um, that is found under fundraising tools um, and you'll be clicking on campaigns and fundraiser templates. These are the two sections we'll talk about. Um, campaigns show all your peer to peer fundraising campaigns, um, including campaigns that maybe your organization has set up during the year. You can see the owner of the campaign, whether it's an admin or a peer to peer supporter. Um, you can click into the campaigns to see more information and the actual campaign itself. Um, you can also click the three little dots to clear out any old campaigns that you do not want donors to be searching for. Maybe you have out of date campaigns from 2021 or last year that you don't want people to be uh, confused by seeing. So you can click these dots and you can toggle discoverability. You can turn them off so they're hidden, but you still maintain all that data. Um, fundraising templates is another good one to pop into to start adding uh, content to, especially if you're going to be promoting peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. This is a section that allows you to pre-fill content on the peer-to-peer -peer fundraising pages. So you can add an image, you can add your logo, you can add your mission statement, a fundraising goal. This pre-filling makes it easier for donors, um, for your supporters to fundraise for you. Um, you kind of fill out a little bit of the groundwork, a little bit of whatever it is you want the um, pages to have on them, and then they can go in and add additional information like why is your organization important to them so they can add a little twist uh, of their own onto the content that you've already added so definitely go in and clear out uh, hide any old out of date campaigns um, and start building your fundraiser template or at least updating the content in case it says 2022 or 2021 um, so take some time to explore that um, i also wanted to emphasize text to give so <clears throat> excuse me so all organizations have access to text to give again this year. Um, a fun tool to use. This is one of our advanced tools on the Mighty Cause platform um, that Giving Day for Apes has access to. So definitely explore it, take advantage of it. Um, it's just another way to get in you know, front of a donor. So basically you'll set it up by going to your uh, fundraising section and clicking text to give, and then you can create a keyword. 
Um, so keywords, basically it's a word, it's a text that somebody is going to donate to this number. Um, and the number is the same for everybody. The keyword is unique for every organization though. So you're setting up a unique keyword um, that no other organization has used. Um, and then that donor is going to text this keyword to this number and they'll be prompted with whatever page you have connected it to. So you can connect your keyword um, like this example shows, you can connect it to a specific campaign, a specific peer-to-peer -peer page, um, or you can just leave it blank. And in that case, it'll be associated with just your organization page. So once the donor texts the keyword um, to the phone number, they're going to receive a response. They'll click on that link in their text message on their phone um, to complete a donation in the amount that they choose. Uh, so this is a good one to add to, you know, if you have events if you want to you know promote in flyers or you know any mailing kind of things that go out you can add that text the keyword on the day make it easy kind of one-stop donation um, this is available to donors in the us and canada uh, but if you are outside if your organization is outside the us and canada totally fine you can still set up the keyword and any donors in the us and canada can still make use of it Um, so moving into admin and reporting, you have a bunch of admin um, kind of settings that you can look over, as well as reporting. Um, so donation reports and disbursements. Uh, for every gift that is made, the admin associated to your organization, to your sanctuary, is going to get an email notification. Um, you can, you know, if you're like, I don't want to receive all these notifications, you can make that adjustment in your user profile settings. Um, but just as a basis, like everyone who is an admin is getting those notifications. Um, you can also access your donor data in real time by downloading a detailed donation report. So under your reports, you can go to <clears throat> all donations and then you can filter by this year's giving event. And you can see all those uh, online gifts, any offline gifts that you've added to your page. Um, and you can start to see where, you know, you're at, you can start making those thank yous, you can start calling, depending on if that's, you know, something that you're doing during the day. Um, and you can also access all your disbursement details uh, post event once the disbursements go out for everything that you've raised, you can click in there and you can see the full kind of itemized list um, to show you your disbursements. Um, we're also going to talk a little bit about retention reports, which is also found in reporting right here. Um, retention reports are going to be a very key kind of campaign strategy that you should work in if you have been a previous participant. So if you've previously participated, then you have access to retention reports. Um, basically, you'll go to the retention button, you'll click the time period, you'll select, you know, the 2022 giving uh, day event. Um, and then it will show you uh, the donors that you have retained, those donors who have given and given again, and the donors that have not been retained. So those donors who gave last year and have not given during this year's event, that is going to be a key group for you to download and send an email to. Um, if they gave last year, it's a great group for you to take, uh, you know, messaging to and say, hey, you've donated to our campaign in 2022. The event is live. We would love for you to support us. Click make a donation now. Um, this is just something that you'll want to keep in mind. Uh, you want to take advantage of it during early giving. This is a good list to keep track of. Um, and then at least at one point during you know, the Giving Day for Apes live event, sometime in the afternoon when you're kind of reconciling and seeing how you're doing, trying to figure out how to keep up the momentum, download this retention report uh, and send out some emails. Um, some settings available to you um, on your dashboard, you can go to settings and you'll see a couple different sections admins. If you have multiple people working on your campaign this year, um, you can go ahead as an admin and you can add additional users of the page. Um, you can uh, update your legal address if you need to under your organization info, you can also set up EFT under disbursements. So you have an option to either set up direct deposit through EFT, or you can uh, opt to receive checks after the event um, for the donations that have come to your organization. So you can make those adjustments under disbursement settings. Um, and you can also customize your social share 
which is really nice. So if you uh, have not taken advantage of that, you go ahead and add your logo, add, you know, some hashtags that you find relevant uh, and make sure the dates, you know, of course, are 2023. Some people forget that the section needs to be updated. Um, but you'll want to make sure you check on that. Uh, basically, when someone clicks to share your page um, via email or, you know, send, you know, to Facebook or Instagram, however they want to share the page, that is the little tile that is going to be kind of generated for them. So you can add pictures, um, you can add a little bit of text, um, you can kind of personalize it and make it more branded to your sanctuary. Um, and then I also want to revisit the resources. We'll just continue to reiterate that you have a wealth of resources available to you. Um, the participant toolkit is excellent. It has so many instructions, so many tips, timelines. We have uh, templates in there for you to try and take some of the lift off of the campaign prep. Um, you can use these templates, you can modify them. It just offers a nice uh, way to kind of get the thoughts flowing. Sometimes it's hard to draft emails um, just from scratch. So definitely take advantage of that. Um, and you can also sign up for the additional two webinar trainings. Um, the asset library, again, found in your organization overview page when you log in on the right hand side. You'll be able to see today's webinar. I'm going to download and upload the slides that we have today so you can just review those slides. You can also see last year's webinars. Um, I believe our getting started one last year has a more kind of walkthrough demo, which is nice. Um, so you can review those. Um, and then, of course, the FAQs. Make sure you review the FAQs as you're drafting emails. It's sometimes, you know, easy to just copy and paste any questions that donors or supporters might have. You can just quickly go to the FAQs for the event and share those answers because we have a lot of answers in there for you. Um, and then, of course, uh, feel free to contact our support team. Mighty Cause of Support teams are here to help you. <clears throat> They're very skilled. They get all the questions you can imagine. So if you have questions on how to set up or queue your matches, maybe you have, you know, a supporter who's having peer to peer technical issues, um, definitely give them a, uh, an email. They're quick to respond. They're available Monday to Friday from nine to five Eastern. Um, and I think that is everything I have. So Jackie, feel free to jump in. And if anyone has questions, we can start to take those now. Thanks, Sarah. And I'm always amazed each year when we go through this, how many different tools there are on the mm -hmm. Mighty House platform. And if you're new to the platform or you're just not familiar with some of these, it's pretty self-explanatory when you go to your dashboard and just start clicking through things. It really does show you how to set everything up. But if you do have questions, as Sarah said, contact Mighty Cause and they can help. One thing I did wanna emphasize that Sarah said was um, for text to give, and this is something we also give some step-by-step -step instructions in the toolkit document. Even if you are not a US uh, or North American organization, it's very, it, it can be a helpful tool for US and Canadian donors. And we get many, many US donors who give to the African and Asian sanctuaries during this event. So it's just another way to um, encourage donations and make things easier for potential donors. So think about using that. Um, the only other thing I wanted to say is, you know, this event is to raise money, of course, but it's also a way to develop new relationships, get some new donors that you can then uh, cultivate those relationships beyond giving day for apes and so what sarah described as the um, you know the options on the page the volunteer pledge question or setting up a call to action button to sign up for the newsletter we encourage you to do that because we want you to follow up with these donors and see if they can support you in other ways and these are some great and easy options to set up on your page and I'm sure we'll be addressing some of these other things in our next two webinars as well. So back to you. Yep, so if anyone, I don't see any questions coming through. Um, it's a lot to digest. I'm going to upload the webinar um, this afternoon so you can revisit it, um, different sections that maybe you, know, you wanna hear again. Um, and then we'll also download the slides so that you can have access to those. Awesome.
Well, thanks for everyone for joining us. Um, we're looking forward to another awesome event and plus being the 10 year anniversary, that's even more exciting. Yes, thanks everyone. Ready, bye everyone.